So um, uh, it's great to be back on, on this stage. And last time I was here, as Saul mentioned, uh, I had just launched my book a couple years ago. And uh, I had talked about the evolving brand of Zappos, how we started out just focusing on uh, footwear and now clothing as well, and then really decided to focus on customer service, uh, ultimately used as a business strategy to have company culture be our number one priority with the belief that if we get the culture right, then most of the other stuff like delivering great customer service or building a long-term enduring brand or business will just be a natural byproduct of that. And from uh, 99, when the, I've been with the company and I'm still with, with Zappos, uh, Amazon has left us independent and the company was founded in 99, so a little over 13 and a half years ago. And 2008 was the first year we hit a billion dollars in gross merchandise sales. We're now at more than $2 billion in sales using this whole strategy of culture, driving customer service, driving word of mouth. And so uh, the name of my book is Delivering Happiness. And I've been asked sometimes by people, you know, with your focus on clothing, customer service, and company culture, and, and kind of simplifying that whole vision to this concept of delivering happiness, What's next? And uh, one of my favorite quotes, and, and I actually forget who it's uh, from, it's from one of, I think, the founders or CEOs of one of the major uh, advertising firms, is that a great brand is a story that never stops unfolding. And so it was a little over a year ago that we actually announced that Zappos will be moving into Las Vegas City Hall. Uh, the city literally just moved out of the city hall into a new one a few months ago. And right now, if you come tours, uh, we actually offer tours to the public. If you come tours Zappos, we're actually in a suburb of Las Vegas called Henderson. And we're spread out amongst three different buildings. And so for the longest time, for actually at least the past six or seven years, we've been looking over the entire Vegas Valley area to find a place that we could call home and have house everyone under one roof and have enough land to expand upon. And it's actually been surprisingly hard uh, and we weren't able to find a great location until the city hall opportunity came up. And then we thought, great, we're going to go and serve our employees and, and think about what we want to build on our dream campus. And we looked at campuses like Nike, uh, Google, and Apple, which have these amazing, beautiful campuses. I remember I toured the um, Nike campus and they had this race running track around their campus and in one of the buildings they had this on-site pub and we thought to ourselves we need one of those <laughs> and then and actually with city hall uh, there's actually jail cells in there still and so we're we're actually i, I think we're going to build a speakeasy bar uh, they're uh, hidden in our uh, in our campus and I, I want the name of the place just to be called bars and um <laughs> So we surveyed our employees, asked them, you know, what are your, the dream amenities you want in, in the dream campus? And you know, bar was one of them, on-site gym, and so on. The number one request we got from our employees was actually doggy daycare. <laughs> Over human daycare. <laughs> and so, um, so then as we started thinking about it more, you know, like, what do we want in our dream campus? And we got this endless list of things from employees we started realizing that all those campuses that I just mentioned, Apple, Nike, Google, were great for their employees, but they're actually relatively insular and don't really integrate or contribute to the community around them. And so the more we thought about it, the more we thought, what if we turned this idea inside out? What if we build a campus that's more like NYU, where the campus kind of blends in with the city and don't really know where one begins and the other ends? And what if investing in just ourselves we invest, invest in the community and the ecosystem. And in the long run, that's gonna ultimately help us attract and retain more employees and be great for the city. And so uh, there's actually, coincidentally with all this thinking and especially with the city hall opportunity, which happens to be coincidentally two blocks away from this area that most tourists don't know about. Most tourists, when they think about Vegas, they think of the Las Vegas Strip, which actually isn't even in, technically in the city of Las Vegas. Or if they know about downtown, they think of the old casinos. Well, there's actually the side of Vegas that a lot of us over the past few years at Zappos had independently discovered called Fremont East. And if you go into any of the places there, you'd have no idea you're in Vegas. And in a lot of ways, it's actually the complete opposite of the Strip. And so there's a uh, couple photos of some of the bars and coffee shops that 
uh, that are there. And I've actually never lived, I, I just moved there um, a year and a half ago, and I've never lived in a more community-focused place than downtown Vegas, which is kind of ironic. It's probably the last place that you would expect to find a real strong sense of community. And I've never lived in a place where the bar owners actually hang out in each other's bars. And so uh, we decided for Zappos to go from the three C's and to add a fourth C to what we want our brand to be about, and that fourth C being community. So separate from Zappos, actually another company was started. Uh, this is just privately funded, so we don't have to answer to outside investors, called Downtown Project. It has a $350 million budget, and the goal is to help make uh, Downtown Vegas uh, the most community-focused large city in the world, uh, to have everything you need to live, work, play within walking distance, and to make it the co-learning and co-working capital of the world. So our whole philosophy is rather than focus on the short-term ROI that a lot of land and building developers focus on, really, let's focus on ROC, meaning return on community. So the big bet that we're making is for Downtown Project, we have our own three Cs. It's about accelerating collisions, accelerating community, and accelerating co-learning. And the big bet, and it's not even really a bet because there's a lot of research from different places that we've kind of collated together that's really proven that this actually already works. It's just never really combined, been combined at a city level. So by combining those three C's, to that that's what's going to lead to happiness, more luckiness, and ultimately innovation and productivity increases. And so uh, I'll go over these uh, separate buckets really quickly. So for small businesses, the idea is to invest in businesses that help build a sense of neighborhood and community. This is actually my uh, apartment, and there's a bunch of post-it notes on the wall, and the, the uh, post-it notes grow every day. And there's actually tours that go through my apartment, which is a little weird in the morning when I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> but we're actually very anti-top-down master planning. And the way we want our community and neighborhoods to grow is really organically and driven by the community. So when people come through, we ask them, what do you want in your dream neighborhood? And though if it's not already posted on the wall, then we encourage them to write down the note and put it on a wall. The other super interesting thing that happens sometimes is we'll get someone whose, say, lifelong dream is to retire 10 years from now and start a cupcake bakery. And we say, well, rather than wait 10 years, let us invest in you now. And then really, from our point of view, it's about helping build the sense of neighborhood and community, helping accelerate other people's passions and dreams. And the idea is to invest in one to 200 small businesses. And there's a few different criteria, and I won't go over uh, all of them, but the most important is that just like at Zappos, we, uh, we have this additional filter for culture. For all our investments, we have this additional filter of community. So even if there's an opportunity to make a lot of money, if it doesn't help build community, that's not something that we're, we're interested in doing. And so uh, this is Natalie. She actually uh, had worked on the strip for... Uh, well over a decade, and she was kind of over, over the whole Las Vegas Strip thing and was actually about to pack her, up her bags six months ago and moved to Arizona. And then we found out that she had worked as a chef on, on the Strip, and her lifelong dream was to start her own restaurant, and she wanted to focus specifically on breakfast and lunch. And so we started talking, and, and she's out and about in the community, and the entire community came together, and this became one of Downtown Project's first investments. And so you can actually see her as she's going through the construction process, and, uh, and it's just amazing seeing uh, you know, these passionate uh, entrepreneurs and happy to report she opened up literally two days ago in Downtown Vegas. And that's just something that's been super rewarding and, and exciting for us. Uh, we also are focused on tech startups, and this is a tech library that was actually built uh, by tech volunteers that we funded the build-out for, and we also are funding the ongoing rent for, and there's been other tech startup companies that moved from other states to downtown Vegas. Uh, and part of the repeal is because not only is there this additional sense of community, but it's really the idea of thinking of the city as a startup, and how many times in your lifetime do you get an opportunity to help shape the future of a major city? We're also teach, partnering with Venture for America, which is kind of like Teach for America, but for college grads that want to become entrepreneurs. We're partnering with Teach for America, and, uh, and we're also partnering with, uh, we took over First Friday, which is this arts and music festival, and partnering with the founders of Burning Man to help bring uh, that sense of art and community and so on to downtown Vegas. And in fact, we had our first urban burn uh, at the, earlier this year, and it was actually a burning woman instead of a burning man. 
And, uh, and then part of the idea is uh, we want to help this art inspire uh, other artists to build their own awe-inspiring uh, community type of art to make the city more walkable. Uh, there's a great book I would definitely recommend, regardless of whether you're uh, interested in any of the revitalization stuff, called Triumph of the City, written by this Harvard economics professor that studied cities from all different time periods and looked at why some thrived and some didn't. And, you know, Rome, New York, Detroit. And it was interesting, some of the research, and this, is, this book has actually guided a lot of the principles that we're using for downtown project. And one of the interesting things is that he cites is every time the size of a city doubles, Productivity or innovation per resident increases by 15%. Whereas when companies get bigger, generally productivity goes down. So uh, part of our goal at Zappos is to avoid that fate. And how do we help, how do we participate in this kind of weird hybrid between a corporation and community and city that's never really been done before and actually get productivity increases and innovation increases as we continue to grow. And kind of the three ingredients that the book cites is you need a residential density of 100 residents per acre combined with street level activity, so all those post-it notes, places like Natalie's and those different bars and coffee shops and so on for the residents to collide. And then the third part is probably the most difficult, this culture of openness and collaboration and sharing, which we already have at Zappos and coincidentally already existed in this Fremont East area of downtown Vegas as well as other parts of downtown. And so this is a lot of the stuff that we think about. We think about uh, how do we maximize serendipitous interactions. And at Zappos, for example, in the building I'm in, we actually, the previous tenant had their back doors unlocked so that the employees could go in and out to the parking lot, which was behind the building, because uh, that was the most convenient thing to do. Well, we actually lock all the doors and force everyone through the front door in order to get those additional collisions. And so uh, we are prioritize collisions over convenience. And the same type of philosophy goes for how we're thinking about the downtown project. And we think about how density in the office, some of our, uh, in the US, I think the average density, uh, square footage of office space per employee is around two or 300 square feet per employee. At Zappos, we're currently at 120 in our offices. And once we move into City Hall, we're targeting sub 100 type of density. And part of that is driven by the research that has shown that every time, uh, if someone sits twice as far away from you in an office, then you don't see them half as often. You see them half as often squared, so a quarter as often. So it's kind of like how the inverse gravity law or, or whatever it's called, called works. And so we do a lot of that type of thinking on the downtown project side too. So basically the big bad is you get all these different groups colliding and there's gonna be um, more groups in a relatively uh, dense uh, space and then the magic will just happen on its own. And that 15% increase in productivity and innovation is kind of the accidental historical average so I think if, you're actually, if we're actually thoughtful about how we're thinking about things and really enforcing these uh, thoughts about collisions and community and co-learning, that we can actually get much more uh, better than that. So for Zappos, uh, you know, cult, our, we've learned that culture is really important and culture is to company as community is to a city. It's the same concept, just at a different scale. And, uh, and this is actually our secret weapon. This is um, right in the, right between actually where City Hall is and where a lot of the bars and, and coffee shops are. Uh, this has 275 units in it. About a third of those are actually rented by, uh, I, I'm one of the residents in this building, uh, as well as other people involved with Zappos or Downtown Project or the tech companies we've invested in. And about 40 of those units are actually set up as furnished apartments that we let people know are basically free hotel rooms that we meet in and say, hey, come check out downtown Vegas. And uh, next time you're in Vegas, stay in one of these free hotel rooms. And, uh, and then they're basically tricked into going to the local coffee shop and <laughs> seeing the local bar and so on. And, th and then we find that downtown just kind of sells itself. And then this really interesting unintended side effect happened from those 40 uh, uh, basically free hotel rooms that we've set up. So what happens is that the people end up meeting each other as well. They just happen to meet in downtown Vegas. And so part of the great thing about conferences like the one we're at, like Biff, is there's actually two reasons to go here. Half the value is in the content, and the other half is just in the serendipitous encounters that you have. And Biff is this great event that happens uh, annually, but downtown Vegas has just kind of unexpectedly evolved into it's almost like we're throwing a mini Biff every single week. 
And so that's been really interesting. And basically, uh, so interesting, in fact, that at the most prominent intersection of all of Las Vegas Valley, Fremont Street and Las Vegas Boulevard, we actually bought uh, the most prominent building there. And rather than make it into a bar or music venue and so on, we decided that we're going to turn it into a speaker's lounge called Inspire Theater for people to give talks just like the, this event that we're at right here. And so uh, it's been interesting because with First Friday, we generally encourage people to come to First Friday to see the Arts and Music Festival. And, uh, and so that's the week one. And now we're actually uh, programming it out and encouraging people from the tech world to come during week two of uh, following First Friday week. And then week three is going to be fashion week. And then week four is kind of like this cross-section of the type of speakers you might find here at Biff or at TED and so on. And the best name we've been able to come up with for that is week four week. And so, <laughs> and so all of this, uh, we're doing some trial runs this year, but all of this is officially launching at the beginning of next year. And so, uh, and so going back to that whole 100 residents per acre, that was our initial goal. Let's get more and more residents to downtown Vegas. And I started thinking about what is the actual value of a resident. And I started thinking about myself. I thought, well, I'm out in about, say, three or four hours a day, you know, walking around or hanging out somewhere. I'm collisionable three or four hours a day. And uh, it's time seven days a week, but I also travel a lot, so call it 40 weeks a year. And so for someone like me, that adds up to about 1,000 collisionable community hours a year. And then we started having these conversations with some people that really wanted to participate in this community, but couldn't move to downtown Vegas. Uh, for example, one of them it was actually one of the largest, if not the largest, fashion-related Kickstarter campaign, manufactures men's underwear on the East Coast, and his family's there, and his factory's there, and so on. And so he said he couldn't come, he couldn't move, but he wanted to help participate in Fashion Week and help grow that. And so we started thinking, well, what is the value of a purposeful visitor to the community? and thought, okay, when he comes, he's going to be out and about doing a talk, helping other fashion entrepreneurs, having office hours, Q&A, and so on, 12 hours a day times seven days a week times 12 weeks a year is, guess what, 1,000 collisionable hours a year. So now, in addition to having people move to downtown Vegas, we have this additional layer as an alternative for people to basically subscribe to downtown Vegas and contribute to the community and be purposeful in their visit. And, and, and that's the way that we wanted to help accelerate all this growth. And when they come to give a talk at the theater and, and so on. And so really the three guiding principles are accelerate collisions, accelerate community, accelerate co-learning. And what we want people to say when they visit downtown, whether they're a resident or a visitor or a purposeful visitor, you know, regardless of whether they're just coming for a couple of days, a week, and, or, or longer, what we want people to say about downtown Vegas is that downtown Vegas will make you smarter. And that's probably the least expected thing you <laughs> expect for <laughs> anything associated with the word Vegas. So across the different companies I've been involved with, uh, and I'm still involved with all of them, Zappos, Delivering Happiness, and Downtown Project, there's this kind of theme of inspiration. And uh, we actually just passed a threshold in human history. For the first time within the last, uh, I think, year or two, where 50% of all humans now live in cities. And within our lifetime, it's going to become 75%. So if we can make downtown Vegas the most community-focused large city in the world, in the place you would least expect it, make it a place of community and learning and so on, and open source that on our website and through other means to help inspire other cities. I mean, in our minds, it's kind of like the four-minute mile. And for, the, for those of you who have, don't know the story of the four-minute mile, for the longest time, people thought it was impossible to break the four-minute mile, or they thought even if you did, you would die right away. <laughs> and, and then one, one year, uh, in 1954, someone did it. And then, within the year or two afterwards, other people did it as well. And it's not that nutrition was suddenly better on Earth, it's just that people believed it was possible. And so if we can make downtown Vegas the most community-focused large city in the world, place of inspiration and learning and community, then we want that to be the four-minute mile for other cities in the world. And so that's why I'm proud to be a resident of downtown Las Vegas. Thank you.